Well, good morning. Welcome back to the 30 day challenge. Yeah, that's two stroke going on back there. I still don't have my boat. Still waiting on the lower unit to get in. Unfortunately, when I spun the prop, apparently it put like a bulge in my lower unit. I had to order a completely whole new lower unit. <clears throat> so hopefully that'll get in this week and uh, I can get my boat back by Thursday or Friday this week. But it is a beautiful morning. Decided to come out on a lake I haven't fished in a while. Uh, it's got loaded with brush piles. Crappie aren't big. There's a lot of them, but they're just, they're not big. That's why I really like fishing the river because there's a chance it's some good crappie on the river. But we're gonna go idle around, find some brush piles and do the double jig setup. I actually fished this setup yesterday on the river. It was a little tricky because a lot of the crappie were stacked up on vertical timber, like some pieces of driftwood by bridges. 30 feet out. I'm, the current's pushing the jigs down river, which is that way. Ooh. There he is. Dropped it right into him. Ooh, that's a good, that's a good black crappie. There we go. I'm definitely worried about this challenge getting completed, but we're making it happen. There's another one for the stringer um, or some lay downs that I knew about. And they were really tight to it. Um, that's because we got cold front. I don't know if you can see. It's like upper 40s right now. I think it's like 48, 49 degrees. We're in mid-September. Cold fronts are coming in. And uh, these crappie are starting to get a little bit deeper. They're going to hold tighter to pieces of cover. And I'll show you on the live scope. That's all I got today. Uh, unfortunately, the trolling motor on this boat doesn't work. The electrical doesn't work on it. So we got the tiller. And uh, we're going to throw out a buoy marker. Throw it on the live scope. And... Try to do the double jig setup, but here's how you tie it on. Got some ACC jigs. My jig box. We're gonna do two sixteenths. Um, we're gonna go chartreuse and pink for our jigs. Uh, preferably one that has a the paint hasn't got into the eyelet yet. Here we go. And this video is sponsored by Crappie Monster. You can go to crappiemonster.com, get 20% off the entire website with promo code DAVIS, that is D-A-V-I-S, all capital letters. And we'll show you the uh, Crappie Monster plastics. Go ahead, slide your first jig up your line and just kind of let it slide up the line for a second. And then we're gonna take our second jig, put it through the tag end, just tie a simple loop knot. You're just gonna double back your tag end to your main line pinch it together, flip it over once, maybe twice, three times, doesn't really matter, but it creates this loop here. And you're gonna put the full jig head through that loop like that. Now, if you want a smaller loop, you're gonna pull on your main line, or your, I'm sorry, your tag in line, and then your main line. That'll create a smaller loop. There you go. Yeah, it's about three quarters inch away from that jig. And now you're gonna clip it. And then for our top jig, we're gonna put them about six to eight inches apart here. Like that, just double them back over, same thing. Pinch the lines together, flip it over once, create this loop, and then put the jig head through it. And there we go. This one's a little bit bigger of a loop than probably what I wanted, but we'll make it work today. We're gonna to be working with these why is that so dark? We're going to be working with these guys right here. These are the crappie monster small fries. Minnow patterns, bait fish pattern. And when we got the double jig set up, it looks like a school of bait fish. Let's get these hooked up and we'll get down there. So like I said, I did catch a few crappie yesterday. Caught a couple of white crappie, which is pretty rare, but for up north anyway. But uh, no, it was fun. Fun yesterday on the river. Didn't catch as many crappie, like I said, that I wanted to. That's why I want to try fishing this lake, because I know these crappie are going to be loaded up on some brush piles. Um, and so we're going to try to catch a bunch on the double jig setup. So let's go find them. All right. Well, we found them on the live scope here. Probably should record that for you. I will in a second. Let's catch a fish first. Drop down that double jig setup. Let me pull a couple crappie out of here. 
Here comes one. Yep. They're not gonna be big though. Nope. We're looking for those nine to 10 inch fish. Those are gonna be keepers in this lake. Some of these crappie are just way down in that brush pile. Here comes one. That might be a better fish. Yeah, that's a, that's a keeper. It's about a nine incher. I'll throw it on a bump board here, but I'm pretty sure that's about nine. So the one thing that uh, not having a trolling motor results in is you constantly have to use the big tiller to idle back around to get to the reposition on these brush piles. But if you noticed on the live scope here, we had a huge cold front come through the last couple days. And what that does is actually pushes these fish real tight to cover. I saw that both on the river and on this lake that I'm fishing. So you have to get these jigs pretty darn close to the brush piles in order to convince these crappie to come out and actually bite them. Uh, whatever, whatever you're using, jigs, live minnows, whatever your double jig setup is. But getting the jigs right on top of the brush pile is super important. Here they come. There he is. Be a, a good, good crappie. Oh, he came off, son of a gun. I think that was a top jig. They feel heavier when they hit that top jig. Now, if I actually had my boat, what I probably would do is not even have to use live scope because there's uh, these fish are stacked so tight to this brush pile. You could probably just fish with 2D sonar. If you got simple 2D sonar, drop the jigs down, uh, open up that cone angle to the widest possible viewing so you could see your jigs on your 2D sonar, which I've done numerous videos on. You can video game fish with just 2D sonar on these crappie because they're stacked so tight to the brush piles, which when you're fishing with electronics, having two jigs to be able to pick out what is what on your screen, it helps a lot. Um, so that's one other advantage of using 2D of using a double jig setup for either 2D sonar or if you're using live scope or some sort of forward facing sonar. Gosh dang, that thing, that brush pile is loaded with crappie. I mean, absolutely loaded. They're not big, but if we can pull eight or nine more nine to 10 inch fish off this brush pile, I think we got ourselves a decent meal. Like that guy. These are going to be our keepers. He's about a nine incher. Not big, but they eat well and they taste pretty darn good too. Just going with that same double jig chartreuse setup that I was using on the river. Three colors that you should always have in your boat. Chartreuse, pink, and white. And if you notice, I got a chartreuse jig head and a pink jig head. Solid, solid combo. Let's get this guy on the old school stringer here. Actually, you probably can't see it. Yeah, got the old school stringer because all the electrical doesn't work in the boat, so I don't have a live well. Two jig heads, pink and chartreuse. And then going with the chartreuse and pearl crappie monster small fry. Double jig setup, you can cast it, but it's best utilized just to pitch it out or vertical jig. Oh, there's a muskie on the bottom. You guys see that big fish straight below the live scope? That is a muskie chasing those crappie. There's a lot of guys out here today and most of them are chasing after muskie. Oh, he's gonna keep two, I think. Uh, now we're gonna throw him back. This is a game of like quarter inches. He's gonna go back, see you buddy. Now as the weather turns and it gets very cold, uh, water temps are gonna drop and these fish are actually gonna push off to a harder and soft bottom transition line. And if you can find any piece of cover along this transition line, I filmed a number of videos in the past these fish will actually step, stack up in very large schools along this transition line. Depending on the type of day, if it's a sunny day, they might be spread out away from the brush piles. But if it's a cold front, they're going to be pushed in to these brush piles, as you guys can see here on the side imaging and the live scope. Double jig setups are a great way to fish deep water and fish fast. So using this 
as we get into fall, into the colder months, it's gonna be a great way to put a lot of fish in the boat. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for me on the water today. I did catch about seven, nothing big, nothing really to show off, but the double jig setup is a great rig for fall crappie. Starting right now, once these crappie get a little bit deeper, all the way into basically for up north when they ice up or when our lakes ice up, those crappie are gonna be in deep water. For you guys down south, this is a great rig to not only fish in the fall, but all through the winter when these crappie are in deep water. You can fish fast and you can put a lot of bait in front of these crappie, a lot of different color patterns, a lot of different profiles to figure out what these crappie wanna hit. So appreciate you watching as always. If you got any comments or questions, post them in the comment section below, or you can message me on either Facebook or Instagram. I always appreciate hearing from you. Good luck on the water this season. Hopefully you're enjoying the 30-day challenge. More to come in the next one.